Let me read to you a passage from the sixth chapter of St. Mark's Gospel, verses 17 to 29. It's the Gospel for the Feast of the Martyrdom of St. John the Baptist on August the 29th. It's a memorial day. St. Mark writes, Herod gave orders to have John arrested, and he had him bound and put in prison. He did this because of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, whom he had married. For John had been saying to Herod, It is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. So Herodias nursed a grudge against John and wanted to kill him. But she was not able to because Herod feared John and protected him, knowing him to be a righteous and holy man. When Herod heard John, he was greatly puzzled, yet he liked to listen to him. Finally, the opportunity came. On his birthday, Herod gave a banquet for his high officials and military commanders and the leading men of Galilee. When the daughter of Herodias came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his dinner guests. The king said to the girl, Ask me for anything you want, and I'll give it to you. And he promised her with an oath, Whatever you ask, I will give you, up to half my kingdom. She went out and said to her mother, What shall I ask for? The head of John the Baptist, she answered. At once the girl hurried in to the king with the request, I want you to give me, right now, the head of John the Baptist on a platter. The king was greatly distressed, but because of the oaths and his dinner guests, he did not want to refuse her. So he immediately sent the executioner with orders to bring John's head. The man went, beheaded John in the prison, and brought back his head on a platter. He presented it to the girl, and she gave it to her mother. And on hearing this, the dis- John's disciples came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. That's from Mark chapter 6, verse 17 to 29, for the celebration, the, the, the feast day of the martyrdom of John the Baptist on August the 29th. What does it suggest to us? Well, it suggests the importance of standing ready against all temptation. What do I mean? Let's think of this, how on this occasion there was no warning And it was all over within minutes. John had been held in prison, the greatest of all the prophets. He of whom our Lord said that there was no one born of woman greater than he. Consider the day from Herod's point of view. It was a big day for him personally. It was his birthday. Sensuous, self-centered, a bit superstitious, enjoying anything akin to popularity a decadent minor prince who had had a notoriously cruel, scheming, yet competent father, Herod the Great. It was his birthday. We read in Mark's account that a grand banquet was organised for the occasion to which his principal courtiers, his chief captains, and in general the first men in Galilee were invited. Think of such people. Consider them as individuals, each with his history behind him, each concerned with his career, his money, his power and his display. In they came, talking, laughing, and the music and merriment surged on with the sumptuous food being brought into the tables. Herod was in his element. It was his big day in the year, so we may presume. Little was he expecting any special turn of events. Away in the dungeon, below perhaps, was the holiest of all the prophets to that point, barring the Messiah himself, who outclassed them all. There John sat, perhaps in the gloom, absorbed in prayer. Nothing especial was expected that day, either on the part of Herod Antipas or his worldly and self-indulgent guests. They knew that John, the prophet of Judea, who had come to confront Herod over his marriage with Herodias, was held below. But that was Herod's business. And Herodias, 
Oh, she did not expect anything this day either. Perhaps she had had a hand in the preparation of the birthday banquet. She was consumed with hatred for the impudent, the impossible, the arrogant, the inflexible so-called prophet from the Jordan River, who seemed to cast a spell over her morally decrepit yet superstitious husband. What mattered to her was his position and wealth, the wealth of her husband. She could not break John's subtle hold on Herod's imagination. He was fascinated by John's moral stature and from time to time would listen to him. Herodias hated, absolutely hated this prophet. He shook her position in the eyes of Herod and perhaps beyond. But nothing special was expected that day by her or anyone. We read in the Gospel text that a suitable day came. We might translate it as an opportunity. The evangelist, looking back on that day, saw it as an opportunity for something terrible. But it was not expected. All that was expected was a good time with the birthday feast at which all the first people of Galilee were there. All were in their places, and on came the special feature of the daughter of Herodias, Herod's new wife. She was spectacular. She dazzled the room and bewitched them all, not least the man himself, Herod. We can imagine him befuddled with his cups, fired with the young beauty before him, seized by the delight of the room and shouting out at the girl in commendation. He scarcely knew what he was saying, for he offered her whatever she desired. It was a display, a display of machismo, and all of a piece with his hopeless moral condition. A couple of years later, Jesus Christ stood before him and refused to speak to him. Ask of me anything you wish, he bawled out at the girl, who was swimming in her vanity, and I will give it to you. Excitement reigned in the room, as all the notables watched the spectacle in interest and merriment. A pause. Herod, emboldened, repeated his offer, his dripping, if unsteady, cup held aloft. No one knew what was about to happen. Neither Herod, nor his guests, nor the girl, nor her mother. None of the protagonists of the day. Nothing was expected. So the girl, with no ideas in her head, asked a minute's leave and sauntered out to her mother, who may have been nearby, overseeing the smooth running of the party. I have been offered anything, the girl said to her. What shall it be? Herodias was not expecting this, nor had her daughter, but like a cat who sees the mouse, she sprang for her prey. The head of John. His head, she replied. The girl looked, understood, and without a moment's hesitation, returned to the presence of her foster father, Herod. The room was full of expectation. What surprise was it to be? No one expected what came. The announcement was made and carried across the hall, and Herod was left speechless. He did not expect this. No one expected it. The guards did not expect it, nor did John expect it. But within minutes, it was all over. One of the worst deeds in the course of human history. Many lessons can be drawn from this and other gospel events, but one is that we must stand ready for any circumstance in the sense that whatever comes, it is God's will that we must be disposed to do. This requires a state of detachment from self and its appetites. Herod was caught in the web of his appetites, and he became the instrument and perpetrator of a great evil. We must always stand ready for whatever God may will, and we must day by day be so disposed and morally equipped to detect temptation and quick to repel it. Let the martyrdom of John the Baptist be a constant example of how easy it is to fall when temptation comes. No one might be expecting it, but the terrible harm is done and sin thus reigns.